Sometimes after a long process of working on a project like this one, you start to lose your focus. On this one, I was trying to get the engine running the way it was supposed to. But by the end of the project, I was so happy to get it running again that I forgot about the finer details. On this mower, there are a couple of things I need to figure out. Otherwise, this mower might be very difficult to use and might even get in the way of a sale. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Toro branded lawnmower, and the problem is that I finally got it running the way it's supposed to after a year of letting it sit around the garage. But I need to figure out why there's a lot of vibrations coming from it, and also it's really tough to push as though there's something wrong with one of the wheels. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it. I'll be glad to answer your questions. I've already made a video prior to this one on how I got it to run without the surging it was doing before. So if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. Otherwise, we'll continue with today's project. So this mower was very badly neglected. The previous owner's kids who basically ran it into anything and everything that might have been sitting in the yard and then basically just left it outside in the sun, rain, and snow. That's some real gratitude and respect for something that your parents gave you. Now, before we go too far into the project, I want to use my push-pull meter to show you just how difficult it is to push this mower around. I'll turn it on, choose my units, and then use the peak feature, and then slowly pull on the mower and see what kind of reading we get. And according to the gauge, it takes 3.45 kilograms to get this mower to move. Now, that's just the first reading. I want to try that again and see if we can get a different reading. So on the second attempt, we got a slightly better reading. However, it's still over 3 kilograms. I know that's hard to visualize, so I'll put it this way. If I had to give this mower a rating, I'd say it was very difficult to push, and I feel as though it's taking twice as much effort as it should to get it moving. So as you can see, the pull rope looked more like a jump rope than just a pull rope. This shows you just the amount of vibration I'm getting from the engine and why I need to figure out what it is and see if it's something I can fix or if I have to price the mower at a massive discount. So of course, if you didn't know it already, the most likely cause for the engine to shake like this when it's running is a bent crankshaft. The only issue is that this is technically a non-fixable issue aside from replacing the crankshaft. Yes, you can try to bend it back, but you risk breaking the oil sump while putting force on the crank. So it's up to you what you want to do. Personally, I would just keep using it, but for someone else, it might be a no-go and would pass on it immediately. The first thing I want to do is to figure out if it's even bent, and to do that, I'm going to remove the spark plug for safety reasons, but also because I don't want to fight the engine as we spin it over. After that, I'll then tip the mower on its side with the oil dipstick facing down. While I have this opportunity, I want to spray some lube into the bushings for the axles. This will help to try and get the mower to be easier to push around. Basically, I need to pretend that this is a car from the 30s and lubricate every moving part. The next thing I want to do is to look at the bolt holding on the blade and have someone slowly pull on the rope while I watch it. For me, since I'm the loneliest person in the world, I have to use my camera to help me out. I'll then simply put a line across the screen up against the edge of the bolt and then slowly pull on the rope. As you can see, the edge of the bolt is staying in contact with the line I put on the screen. What this tells me is that the bolt is spinning in one position and that the crankshaft is not bent, because if it was, the bolt would then move back and forth in comparison to the line I put against it. So this is very good news because it means the shaking is not because of the crankshaft, which would be tough and expensive to fix. So hopefully whatever is causing the shaking can be fixed and a lot less expensive at that. So the next possible reason for the shaking is a blade that's bent. What that means is that both ends of the blade might not be at the same level. Basically, the blade is not spinning in a single plane. 
Now this one will be a bit harder to see and measure without getting some tools out, but the same visual tool we just used will also work here as well. As you can see, I put a mark down for one end of the blade, and the other end should match it, but as you can see, it's about a quarter inch above it. That proves that the blade is bent and that one of the ends is not on the same level as the other one, and that's causing the engine to shake when it's running. If we take a closer look at the ends of the blade, they don't show any real signs of damage to them, and I thought I might want to try and bend the end of the blade that was higher up back into position, but instead, I'm going to install a different blade and see if that one was bent too. Hopefully it's not, and the shaking will go away. Now the reason I'm doing it this way is because I don't want to buy a new blade only to find out that the shaking hasn't gone away, so as long as the other blade isn't bent and the shaking improves, then I'll order a new blade, but right now I think this is a good idea. After installing the other blade and doing the same visual test as before, I can see that the ends of this blade are very close to each other, at least in comparison to the other blade, so I'm very confident that if the shaking does go away, then the blade being bent was the cause for it. Now, I'm not going to throw away that other blade just yet, I'll just mark it as being bent and then set it aside to be used for some other testing, or maybe I'll set up a machine to bend it back into plane, but for right now, I'm going to take a look at what's causing our other issue. So as you can see, the larger rear wheels really don't have an issue with spinning, but are showing some signs of not spinning smoothly. So for this one, I'm going to remove the wheel and look at the bolt and see if they have some corrosion or dirt on them that's causing it to spin the way that it is. Once free from the mower, I can already see some rust around where the bolts go on the height adjusters. This is not a good sign, and of course, once the bolt is out of the wheel, you can see there's a lot of rust on them as well. After using some brake cleaner and some scotch Brite pads on the bolt, I'll then apply some lithium grease to the bolt and on the steel inserts in the wheels before reinstalling them. Now you can use whatever lubricant you have on hand, I just like using lithium grease in a can because it's so convenient to use, but any type of light oil will do, and if you're in a real pinch, even clean motor oil will work as well. After getting the wheel back on the mower, be sure that the bolt is on tight, otherwise it will come loose while you're using it. Then I'll give it a good spin, and as you can see, it's spinning smoothly and freely, unlike what it was doing before. Next, I'm going to move on to the front drive wheels, which I think is where our real issue is at. As you can see, this front wheel is having a tough time spinning, so this was definitely the cause for this mower being so tough to push. Hopefully it's just corrosion on the bolt like the other one, otherwise the issue might be with the drive line, which if it is, could spell trouble for this mower. Luckily it turns out the bolt is stuck inside the wheel. I know that sounds bad, but it's good because we can fix this versus if it was the transmission instead. I'll just play whack-a-mole with the bolt using my trusty 2x4 hoping to miss my thumb and then wrestle the bolt out of the steel insert. Now once free of the wheel, I'll then do the same process of cleaning the corrosion off the bolt and the steel insert in the wheel and then using a liberal amount of lithium grease, put everything back together and hope this fixes our issue. But before I put the wheel back on, I'm also going to spray some lubricant on the back side of the drive gear as well. Now this is not the best way of getting lube where you want it to go, but it's better than no lube at all. Now once the wheel is back on the mower, don't expect it to spin like the rear wheels, but all I was hoping for was that it spins better than what it was doing before we took it off, cleaned it, and lubricated it, which after spinning it again, certainly looks that way. So I consider this a success, and we should definitely get a better reading on our gauge later on when we test it. Now to give you a better visual of just how much better the wheel is spinning, I've already done the same process to the other side, and as you can see, I can now easily spin the front wheels, which was really tough to do before cleaning and lubricating them. So we're almost ready to test how this engine runs after switching out the blade, and of course do another round of testing with the pull meter to see just how much easier it is to push this mower, but I also have to change out the brake cable first. Yes, if you saw the other video on this mower, I did change out the brake cable in that video already, but because I used older footage of this mower before I changed it out, I wanted to show a few clips that included me changing it. Now these cables do not like getting wet, especially if you clean them right before putting them away for winter, so be very careful not to get too much water on the ends of the cable. If you do, just make sure the mower has time to dry off before you put them away. Also, these cables are fairly cheap to buy, especially when you order them from online retailers. Just know that in case you decide to go to your local small engine shop and get sticker shock there. Now, I don't have any issues with local small engine shops, but understand they have to make money too. So even though this cable was only $13 shipped to my door from an online retailer, at the small engine shop it may be over $15 or more, and that's not including sales tax either. I do believe 100% gasoline with no ethanol is getting tougher to find nowadays, and if you're in that situation, do whatever you can to keep that fuel from going bad. 
I know I've said it plenty of times to use some sort of fuel additive to help keep it from going bad, and I've heard from a lot of folks who say it doesn't work, but I do want you to know not all additives work well and some work better than others. So as you can see, it appears the shaking has pretty much disappeared, which means our test blade, which was not bent, just confirmed that the original blade was bent and causing the shaking. All we have to do now is to replace the blade with a new one and someone's going to get a really good running mower. The last thing we need to do is to use the pull tester again and see just how much less force it takes to get this mower to move. If you recall, the best reading we got last time was slightly over 3 kilograms, so hopefully we'll get something lower than that. And it looks like all that cleaning and lubricating paid off because this time we get a very low reading of 1.36 kilograms, which is less than half of the best reading from the last time. To put it into perspective, this mower went from being very difficult to push to very easy, and when the buyer moves it, they're going to realize just how nice it is to move around. So after a year of having this mower just sitting around, it's finally running well, not shaking anymore, and it's super easy to use, even if you don't feel like using the self propel. So if your mower is shaking a lot and you think you might have a bent crankshaft, try out my test and see if your camera can pick up if it's bent, and if it isn't, then there's a good chance your blade is the issue and it just needs to be replaced. If, however, your crankshaft is bent, there's not much that can be done about it. You can either keep using it or take matters into your own hands, but it is quite risky. So my question is, have you ever given away, thrown away, or given up on a mower that you thought had a bent crankshaft? I know I have, and unfortunately I've sent a few of them to the scrapyard, but only after taking all the parts off of it that I could use. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.